The first example I'm going to do is not in your notes, okay? And it's an example of a simple pendulum. Okay, so this example is a simple pendulum and we're going to solve the equation of motion for the pendulum using Lagrange's method or Lagrange's equation. And so we've got an equation, we've got a pendulum here, length L with a bob of mass M and it oscillates backwards and forwards with an angle of theta. Okay? I'm going to set a datum to be this point here so this is my y direction and this is my x direction y is upwards, x is horizontally and again the method I'm going to use is to find the position of the bob in the xy coordinates okay then you find the displacement by differentiating with respect to time you find the velocity so xy of the pendulum bob. Well, in the x direction, we've got obviously L, and then it's opposite the angle, so it's sine of theta. That's the x position of the bob. If y is upwards, it's positive, then downwards is negative, so I have a minus sign L, and then it's the vertical displacement of the bob, which is going to be L cosine of theta, because it's the adjacent side. Okay, there's the position of the bob in the xy coordinates. And so to find x dot and y dot, find the velocities. Well, it's relatively straightforward. We have L, which doesn't vary with time, so that stays as a constant. We've got theta, that comes out, theta dot, cosine of theta. And then obviously cosine turns into minus sine, so that gets rid of that, becomes a plus. We have a theta dot come out, theta dot sine of theta. So there's the velocity, so we now find t, which is our equation, um, which is our energy. So one half m, then we've got x squared, so x dot squared, plus one half m y dot squared. There's our equation, that's our energy, kinetic energy of the bob. And so this obviously is going to be one half m l squared theta dot squared cosine squared theta plus one half m l squared theta dot squared sine squared theta. So this becomes one half m l squared theta dot squared cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Obviously that is equal to one. And so t is one half m l squared theta dot squared. Well, the potential energy is due to gravity, and if I say H is the vertical displacement, the vertical position of the bob, we know that H equals minus L cosine cosine theta. So I've added that to the diagram just to make it clear. So V must be minus m g L cosine of theta. OK, so we've got T and we've got V. There's no damper in this equation, so R is 0. The next step is to find the Lagrangian, L, which is T minus V. And so we have, take T, we've got 1 half M L squared theta dot squared minus V, so that's plus M 
g l cosine of theta. There's l. <coughs> so then we obviously need to apply Lagrange's equation, which I'll write over here. It's d divided by dt of dl over d theta dot minus dl over d theta equals zero, because there's no forcing function on this pendulum. And so dl over d theta dot, we have m l squared theta dot, yeah? And so we take the time derivative of that, that simply comes ml squared theta double dot. So that's the first term in the, in the uh, Lagrange's equation. The second term is dl by d theta. So the this time the first term is not included, that's a constant that disappears, but this second term is. We've got a cosine theta. Well, the differential of cosine theta is minus sine theta, so this becomes minus m g l sine of theta. And that goes into here. So we plug in those terms, we have m l squared theta double dot plus because that minus is a minus here, so my mg l sine of theta equals zero. <coughs> now we can divide both sides of the equation by ml, because they're in both terms, and so we end up with l theta double dot plus g sine of theta equals zero. And there is the equation of motion for a pendulum. Notice that it does not matter, as we know, the mass of the bob is not part of the equation of motion of a pendulum. It doesn't matter what's going on with the bob, how, much, how big the bob is. If you've got a pendulum, you could hang a feather from it, or you could hang me from it, or a double like a bus. The period of oscillation would be the same, we know that. And just to show that this is indeed correct, Let's assume small angles. So as an aside, if we assume small angles, one thing we know that sine of theta becomes theta. Okay, and cosine of theta becomes one if we assume small angles. And so if you plug in small angles into here, you get L theta double dot plus G theta equals zero. Divide both sides by L, we end up with L. Theta double dot plus G over L theta equals zero. And we know the solution for this, theta is cosine, oh sorry, A cosine omega T plus phi, where omega is root G upon L. That you've seen before. Assuming small angles, you get the equation of motion through a pendulum, assuming small angles. Okay, so that's, that's not assuming small angles, that's the equation of motion of a pendulum. If you assume small angles, you can see the sine of theta becomes theta. You plug it in, you rearrange slightly, and you get this equation. This is, it, this is the uh, one-dimensional oscillation equation. Remember we had x double dot equals k upon m times by x equals zero. Well here, this is for a pendulum. Pendulum is dependent upon gravity and depending on the length of the pendulum. Okay, and you know that this, this is the solution for this equation where omega is root g upon l. And again, that shows that the mass has no influence on the oscillation period of a pendulum. Okay. This is nonlinear. There's a sine term. This is linear. As we find the kinetic energy, T. We find the potential energy, V. L is T minus V, so we end up with this equation. 
And then it's simply a matter of applying this formula. Okay? So you have to go through finding the derivative of L with respect to theta dot, which we've done here. You then take the time derivative, which gives us this, and that then can be put into this first term. Second term is dl over d theta. So here's our theta term. You then find the derivative of L with respect to theta, which gives us this term. You then plug those things into the equation, which gives us this. And then I've divided both sides by ML, because they're on both sides. The M's cancel, and one of the L's cancels. You end up with this term. And that's the equation of motion for a pendulum. And it's nonlinear. There's a sine term in it. But let's assume we assume small angles. So that means that sine of theta becomes theta. We end up with this equation. Divide both sides by L, you get this equation, which you've seen before. One of the more fundamental equations of the law of physics. And the solution for that we know is this, where omega is root g upon L.